Hello, everybody. Howdy. Hey, Jehovah's Witnesses. Here we are again. We're either the two apostates you love to hate, or you just love to love. <laughs> <laughs> or just find us annoying. <laughs> yes. Wow, we've got some things that we want oh to share. Goodness. But this is also going to be incorporating with the video that we mentioned last time. Jehovah's Witnesses, this is what you're going to want to watch. Yeah. Exactly. But just bear uh, with us for a few minutes. Yeah, we've got several different news items here that uh, we want to share and some uh, Watchtower articles that we found. Um, yes. We want to thank Matthew for sending us the links to this because he's seen where we were talking um, in, I believe, our last video about Watchtower being asked to come up with $5.5 million to renovate a park yeah, there in park New York before they leave. Yeah. Well, we actually, he actually found a couple Another more articles. Another article, yeah. Now, this one's even more interesting, folks. Yeah. Now, this one is actually from the Daily Mail um, in the UK, and it is entitled, Jehovah's Witnesses Set to Make $1 billion dollars by selling off their New York City Watchtower headquarters. Now we know the actual asking price has not been been revealed so this right. is estimated. And according to this article this is a very conservative estimate so it could go for 1.2 billion. I mean you two know billion. 2 billion. I mean if one point if 1 billion is conservative that means that there's probably going to be a higher asking price. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to put the link to this down below because there's even a video, Jehovah's Witnesses to Sell Prime Brooklyn Properties. And underneath that, it says the Witnesses bought their current 733,000 square foot headquarters from Squibb Pharmaceuticals for $3 million in 1969. That's wow. a hell of a profit, <laughs> let me going, tell you. You're going from $3 million to over a billion in just a you know few decades oh <laughs> my yeah. goodness oh hey hey it's a good thing that watchtower is a viable religion because they can make all that money with paying no taxes what a what a real estate gem they fell into huh oh that's jehovah's blessing oh that yes that's the blessings from jehovah yeah okay um, as we've grown as an organization, we've had to buy scattered properties whenever we could find them. And this is uh, Divine, Devine, you know, their PR guy. With a big scattered campus like that, it's challenging to administer and to maintain. And I believe up here they said uh, over the years they've bought um, uh, 36 buildings scattered over, <laughs> all over Brooklyn. Yeah. Does oh. anybody smell real estate vogels here? I mean, I do. <laughs> oh, are we supposed to feel sorry for them that they've had to run all over to all these different buildings oh, no. and stuff? Oh, no. Uh-uh. I don't feel sorry for these scoundrels at all. Yeah. Okay. The latest sale of the headquarters building is expected to raise more than $1 billion. Okay, and then they go on to talk about Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who purchased the nearby 1.4 million square foot complex from the Witnesses in 2013 for $375 million. Now, that sounds kind of cheap to me. Well, compared to $1 billion, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it is cheap. Yeah. Okay, the article goes on. In upstate New York, the Witnesses have purchased hotels and other properties for volunteers building the church's new headquarters. The organization has been in Brooklyn since 1909, but seems culturally distinct from its gritty meets yuppie surroundings. Except for the part that was supposed to improve like 10, 11 years ago, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, I wanted to mention this here. Oh the goodness. article says, um, SICA, S-I-C-A. I would say SICA. Yeah. Um said she is looking forward to the witnesses move in part because the church's properties seem off limits to non-members with fenced in parking lots and no street level retail it's closed off she said you get that sense of this this place is not for the public you mean cult cult like piece of property 
You know, that's what's going to happen up there in uh, Warwick. It's going to be off limits yeah. to the public, isn't it? Yeah. Do doesn't so, it sound like Jonestown in Guyana back in the 70s? Ooh. Yeah. I wonder what flavor Kool-Aid they're going to serve up sometime in the future. Mango. <laughs> Mango. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I wanted to mention this article. It says, before they leave, the witnesses should follow through on a promise to redevelop a neighborhood park, which they agreed to do in exchange for a zoning change. And we mentioned, that's what we mentioned yes. in our last video, that they were wanting, that's what they were wanting the $5.5 million for. Some of the information that she's alluding to here really got interesting in a hurry. Yeah. Um... All right, so now we are going to another article that oh, Matthew... Oh, pardon me. It's another article. That Matthew found. It's called cranesnewyork.com article, and I'm going to list it down This below. is what get interesting in a hurry. <laughs> okay. Um, the group's former holdings are already blooming into top-flight assets for the area, such as the building Dumbo Heights office and retail complex in the heart of the Brooklyn Tech Triangle. But with those projects comes additional strain on local infrastructure, such as parks, schools, and subways. Now, this is where it gets interesting. These sales, windfalls, and resulting development make clear that it's time for the witnesses to give something back to the neighborhood that fostered their growth and bankrolled their future. Should give something back, huh? Yeah. Former New York City Council member David Yasick had the same thought in the early 2000s when the witnesses parking lot at J and Front Streets were rezoned. He and other local stakeholders saw a contribution from the group to rehab the ragged New York New, uh, ragged York Street F train station along with Bridge Park 2, a bleak slab of asphalt operated as a city park between the Farragut Houses and the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Those fixes, which Yasky says the witnesses committed to fund, never happened. A decade later, they're, they're needed more than ever. As the downtown Brooklyn has seen $6.3 billion invested in 88 construction projects over that period, with 37 more in the pipeline, and that doesn't even take into account anticipated growth in neighboring Dumbo. Now, this is you know going on in right. the whole area. Before they leave for good, the witnesses should dedicate 5% of their latest real estate proceeds, about $50 million, <laughs> toward local public amenities. Not only would that represent a minuscule portion of their earnings, but it's yeah. well below the property taxes that they would have paid over the decades if not for their exemptions as non-profit. See, and I've, I've long held to the idea and the thought that, you know, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, the thought process was is that the United Nations was going to turn on Babylon the Great, which would start the beginning of the Great Tribulation, and, you know, trying to think things through, what would be the one thing that would cause the governments to turn on religion and, you know, de eat her fleshly parts and decimate her? and leave her naked and out in the Broad Street, that would be money. When you see what's happening here with the Watchtower and Babel Crap Society and how much money they stand to make and how much money, even at $50 million, is just a small drop in the bucket of how much the governments had lost, especially New York City, has lost in the taxes that they've lost out on by allowing this nonprofit organization yeah. to reside in New York City. So do you think they're going to be sad to see him go? No. No, they're not going to be. They're going to be glad to get the witnesses the hell out of New York City and get someone in there like Donald Trump's son-in-law with a viable business that's going to be paying taxes, which is going to help the entire community. Yeah. And this is one thing I always thought that the, if the governments are going to turn on religion as, you know, the Bible says, I think it's going to be over money because the governments are waking up to what's happening with nonprofit cults like the Watchtower and Babel Crap Society. Yeah. Um, 
And then it goes on to say that that money could go toward critical assets like a new public school to help yeah. alleviate persistent and growing overcrowding yeah. and updating that park and some subway terminals. And so they really, the city really could use some of this money. Well, can you imagine and, like up in um, Warwick even, they're, they're buying hotels up there as a non-profit organization and, and hurting the town and now the cities are losing out on tax revenue that would have been generated if they'd have left it as a hotel yeah instead of selling it to a non-profit organization now the person that wrote this article is called tucker reed and he is the president of the downtown brooklyn partnership a non-profit local development corporation and i love his ending comment at the end of this article but now the Jehovah's Witnesses are reaping those benefits on their way out the door without giving back to the neighborhood that fueled its fortunes. It's time to make sure that happens before it's too late. So I think you're going to see a lot more towns and cities and stuff waking up to, you know, having the Jehovah's Witnesses in yeah. your neighborhoods and uh, their buildings and stuff is not really an asset to the city and stuff. It's actually a strain. Well, yeah, it um, is. They're... they're uh, really a strain to any town's economy because yeah. they're a non-profit organization which I, I refuse to go to bifocal sorry to yeah. interrupt. i refuse to go to bifocal so now i have two pairs of glasses <laughs> <laughs> which leads us into <laughs> that leads you. us into the yeah, questions that from leads readers. <laughs> us into the questions from readers this comes from a uh march you see make sure it's march yeah it's march 15th 1951 Watchtower. Now, I know that Jehovah's Witnesses don't like going back to the old literature because <laughs> that's outdated and, you know, that's passe and it really doesn't mean anything to a religion that's progressive. Yeah. But here's the question. Page 191. Yes, here's the question. Because really, it, it does apply to today because Jehovah's Witnesses in their endeavors to qualify themselves as the true religion, they say, look at the growth. Just look at the growth that this religion is experiencing. It proves conclusively that Jehovah is blessing us. So here's the question. In the past, we regarded religion as anything that was against God's will. Now, many brothers are using the expression true religion and false religion to make a distinction. Is this advisable? What we all know as Jehovah's Witnesses, we love the phrase, well, we have the true religion. Everything else is false religion, false religion. This is what the Watchtower says, and then we're going to get into something. The brothers are correct in using the qualifying objectives, true and false, respecting religion, so as not to be misunderstood, especially by those outside the organization. Okay, and I'm going to leave it right there because it's just one paragraph. They go into some, some Greek words and form of worship and religion, religious, what blah, foot, blah, blah. What does footnotes in the New World Translation have to do with... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Any of that. Yeah. Except <laughs> except for the last sentence. Hence, it is well to make clear our use of the term religion by qualifying it as true or false if the context or setting does not do sufficiently. Now, <laughs> this is quite ridiculous. What Watchtower has done is, before this article came out in 1951, they did an article in the January 22nd, 1947, Watchtower. And it's entitled, Dear... It's the Awake. Awake, okay, Awake. I stand don't, corrected. Don't you just love when you're looking for one article and you find another one? It just kind of jumps out well, at you. It, and it just so happened to be that um, this... Some of this particular information was sent to us through uh, by um, the unknown apostate, correct? I believe so. Yes, the unknown apostate. And we just happen to have 
the uh, bomb volume that this in, that part of this information comes from. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So you, you want me to read this one? Yeah, yeah. Do this one first because okay. this one's really great. I mean, here's here's Watchtower with the audacity to print this. Yeah. And once again, it's the January 22nd, 1947, Awake, page 9. And the article is called, Who Thinks For You? <laughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> Can you guess where this is going already? Yeah. Invasion forces are striking hard at the peoples of the world. Not that the seething political pot, pot wherein Bruce World War III has boiled over, it hasn't. But aggression weapons now in action are mightier than military weapons. The gem of propaganda is mightier than the sword. <laughs> and that pen is often misused to un unbreath the world. The sword. Unbreath un the, the sword. I need my glasses. My goodness, the way this wording. Okay, let's see if we can do that again that makes defense against its imperative propaganda's growing power constitutes a challenge to the individual to use his own mind if he has a mind of his own to use <laughs> advances Jehovah's on witnesses do you have your own mind to use advances on the propaganda front have not lagged behind the gigantic strides made by scientific mass murder Wow. By wave after wave and sustained round-the-clock attacks, the professional propaganda seeks to subjugate the minds of the people and to mold public opinion to suit selfish interests. <laughs> Wherever one turns, he is met by direct frontal assaults or victimized by subtle flank atta attacks or ambushments. I don't even know if that's a word. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I find this interesting. They say that by wave after wave in substantial round-the-clock attacks, the professional propaganda seeks to subjugate the minds of the people and to mold public opinion. And up until recent years, you ask someone that's a non-Jehovah Witness what their public opinion of Jehovah's Witnesses are, and off, more often than not, you get, oh, they're those nice Christian people that go from door to door preaching. That was the public impression of the public opinion of Jehovah's Witnesses. And now, isn't it funny that that public opinion of Jehovah's Witnesses is changing? Well, just like in that article that we just read, that yep. whole area of New York, it sounds like they're not too Their happy with Their opinion of Jehovah's Witnesses have changed. Yeah. Devices of propagandists have developed amazingly during the past three decades. Now, remember, this is 1947. Right. And they increased a word change in meaning. Propaganda was once an honest word. <laughs> its root idea is the propagating of natural seed. By extension, it meant the propagation of ideas. And as the ideas became more selfish and evil, further extension gave the word a sinister meaning, meaning to keep pace with the ideas. Hence, today, propaganda has become unsavory in meaning, but its practice has been so artfully developed that millions gobble it up with apparent relish. <laughs> oh. Now, I should point out that the reading, reason we're reading this article is because we feel that this is Watchtower talking about itself again. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Watchtower has written so many scathing articles like this to point the finger at other people or other religious <laughs> groups. three pointing back. And now this same article is self-condemnatory to Watchtower because they've fallen right into the same pit that everyone else, you know, seemingly has preceded them down into. <laughs> but they're going to help us recognize propaganda. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Defense through knowledge. Your defense against propagandists comes through knowledge of their methods. Reasoning is their deadliest foe. Their play upon your emotions may lead you to their conclusions. Complacency and self-flattery let you call it thinking. But when you try to give concrete reasons for your conclusions, <laughs> you are first surprised and then embarrassed to discover you have none. 
Like 607 BCE? Exactly. It just absolutely <laughs> falls flat in its face now, doesn't it? Yeah. Or even some of the other things. That's one of the reasons why they're getting rid of the reasoning book. Because you can't reason out of it now, Jehovah's Witnesses. Because too much information has come forward about how Watchtower has manipulated other people's work by putting in the ellipsis and making you believe the Watchtower bullshit when in all reality the person that they're quoting didn't say that whatsoever. <laughs> okay, so back to the article. An outstanding tactic in stirring emotion is name calling. You mean like mentally diseased apostates? Mentally apost diseased apostates, exactly. By it, the propagandist, propagandist gives a person or group or idea against which he propagandized a propag Gandizize, propagandizes. <laughs> Rutherford, why couldn't you use just a simple word? Good lord. Okay, propagandizes is a bad label. The hateful name rouses anger. And isn't that blind it, hate and anger? That's blind we hate. Talked about before against apostates. See, and this is what propagandists use. They use words that generate blind hate. And yeah. that's what Watchtower has done for those that have left their, you know, true organization. Yeah, and like this next sentence I'm going to read, I just want to say, all you have to do is call the elders and say, say this person is an apostate. That, you know, Oops. all My his mom, mom did. did. Okay? Yeah. Now, He's speaking apostasy. Thinking about that, let me read this. Um, the hateful name rouses anger, and the one smeared by it is condemned without any evidence being examined. If one is yep. called a red, a heretic, a yellow traitor, or other name of odious import, the wily propagandist knows that listening bystanders will hesitate to question or examine the charge for fear that they might be considered as sympathetic towards such classes. Exactly. And it's funny because Watchtower is exposing how propagandists work and operate you know, prior to 1947, and obviously they're writing this article for future use against propagandists, but yet again, this <laughs> article self-condemns the Watchtower <laughs> Babble Crap Society, because yep. this is exactly what they use for members that exit their cult by calling them apostate, mentally diseased, yep. and yet this is exactly what they're speaking against, and this is exactly who they have become. Yeah. Okay, so back to the article. Most people listen, and if it is discrediting against an unpopular person or group or apostate, they believe, and as it is repeated, it is accepted as incontrovertible truth. <laughs> Minds become so set that the accused one cannot even gain a hearing. Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. I mean, here's here's the thing. We've all watched some of the judicial hearings, and when evidence, when conclusive evidence is brought forth that Watchtower was a member of the United Nations well, from what 2000, um, from 1990 something to 2000, that the hearing, the victim is not even heard because they don't accept the truth that Watchtower was part of the UN and still is in Europe as it sits right in front of these idiot elders. Yeah. So minds become so set that the accused one cannot even gain a hearing without ever giving ear to the victim, without ever asking for evidence yep. and proof. The charge is accepted and believed and repeated. Wow. Yeah, so then we're going to skip over to this one because they're talking about the reverse of name calling and how they, you know, pray, he preys on you and stuff, which is considered propaganda too. For instance, to say that the conflict between the Catholic Church and Russia is a fight between God and atheism implies by the relationship of ideas that the Catholic Church and God are synonymous. <laughs> By such false but subtle transfers of emotion, the clever propagandist sugarcoats a pill otherwise distasteful. Now, we know Watchtower does this because they cannot separate God and the organization. And that's where a lot of the battle comes from 
um, families that are divided. You might have a husband that's not a Jehovah's Witness, never been a Jehovah's Witness, at one time married a weak sister. She becomes strong after the marriages ensued. And then the husband's trying to help the wife realize that this organization is not God. And Jehovah's Witnesses have a difficult time separating the two. And my, my mother falls in that same category. She absolutely believes this organization is God. Yeah. Well, I actually forgot the first part of the sentence because it's talking about um, the practice of associating with the new idea some organization or person or symbol that already carries public sanction and authority and prestige. So, you know, then you get God or Jehovah. Right. This is his organization, and that's why they cannot separate the two, because this is a propaganda technique. And what Watchtower has done over the years is they've always looked at the statistics and their growth as evidence that God is blessing their organization, and we have more to follow regarding yeah. that. Then there's the propagandist that harps on the theme that practically everybody is doing it, whatever he is recommending, the few holdouts must follow the crowd by one of the gang, be one of the gang, that since the majority does it, it must be right. If you hold out, you seem set yourself, okay, if you hold out, you seem to set yourself against the world. A rather conceited position, he suggests. <laughs> now, Watchtower does this in reverse. They're the elite, they're the ones, and it is the world that is being condemned. Well, but see, that, but see that's, that's why in that question from readers a few years later, the qualifying term, true religion yeah. and false religion. Yeah, this type of propaganda always tries to make you think there is a grand rush to mount on the bandwagon and that you had better hurry, too, because it's the winning side. Hurry up. Armageddon Hurry up, coming. you better get baptized before Armageddon comes. Don't wait and lose out. Don't take time to think, but hurry while there is still time. Don't take time to think reminds me of one of their recent articles where in, in a study article they said, you know, be prepared to obey even if it's against, um, um, even if it's, uh, see, I got to stop and think now. <laughs> even if it goes against logical, that however it is that them idiot, however it is them propagandists, were to be prepared <laughs> To obey, even if, it if it's not logical from a human yeah. standpoint. The propagandist has done the thinking for you and now seeks to stampede you to his side. A potent propaganda dodge is to tell you only half truths. <laughs> Don't choke on your tea. <laughs> the facts are carefully selected. Oh, wow. Those, That's exactly how Watchtower operates this day and age. Those not advantageous, eliminated, and lopsided, incomplete views given. Related thereto is the device of giving statistics. Ooh, 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 and here we go with the propagandists. statistics. Propagandists love throwing statistics out there. And, and isn't that what Jehovah's Witnesses do? Because... You ask a Jehovah Witness to prove that Jehovah's black, that God, Jehovah God, is backing the organization. Well, just look at the growth. Just look at the numbers. Look, look how many people we baptize every year. Jehovah has to be blessing this because of the statistics. And yet, Watchtower in 1947 says that this is a mark, something that propagandists use. Self-condemnatory, isn't it? Yep, Mikey's riled. And well, this is just absolute bullshit <laughs> when you realize that Watchtower follows step by step by step every qualifying factor as a propagandist, don't they? Well, actually, this is a good thing. Well, I know because it makes it easier <laughs> to see that they're nothing but a bunch of bullshit peddling idiots. Now, by the way, I can use that term because even though... Um, even though I'm using names and name calling, there was a portion in this article that pretty much said it's okay to do if it's true. <laughs> An imposing column of figures seems to cast a spell over many. <laughs> and while figures honestly assembled may not lie, clever figures who manipulate them often do. <laughs> Silver tongue orators play on the emotions rather than appeal to reason. Music aids the propagandists to stir hearers oh, to comes. high pitches of religious 
militaristic, patriotic, or passionate fervor. We thank you, Jehovah, oh, please. each day. Or we're and Jehovah's each, Oh, yeah. We're Jehovah's Witnesses. We speak out in fearlessness. Duct tape? This is exactly what Watchtower has done. When you really examine the world of religion, most religions stick with the old-time traditional hymns. Watchtower comes out as propagandists with their own brand of religious hymns, well, which is designed to stir the emotions and everything else. Well, a lot of modern churches now actually have bands right in yeah. with their, you know, service. Yeah, so they exactly. know music works. Baseball yep. games. When everybody's sitting there and it's a whole hum game, what do they do? They immediately start playing dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah, they get the the you know they start playing that music. With the music. So exactly, yeah. flashy displays, dimly lit cathedrals, publicity stunts, and the like are employed to fire emotional acceptance of ideas without examination. <laughs> Don't go do the research, brothers. Because we have qualified brothers that'll do that for you. Trust the watch, yeah, the the Witch Tower and Babel Crap Society, because we have qualified brothers. So you don't need to spend much time in you know uh, research and study because we'll we'll do that for you. Now this next part made me think of the new Sophia and Caleb cartoons. Clever cartoons work fast <laughs> and hit hard. But are not always true. The same may be said may be said for slogans and proverbs. You mean stay alive till seventy five? Yeah. Okay. Then propagandists stoop to suppression of unfavorable facts, and we all know where this is gonna go. Yep. How could you bring reproach to Jehovah's organization and the congregation for even talking about child abuse or negative things about our brothers and sisters <laughs> in the organization? Sound familiar? Absolutely. Yeah. For instance, newspapers suppress the facts about Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, <laughs> wait, wait a <laughs> now, now, this is Jehovah's Witnesses writing in their own magazine, okay? How, okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For instance, newspapers suppress the facts about Jehovah's Witnesses. The radio is conducting a campaign to suppress and squeeze out all liberal commentators and the movies must submit to censorship by a committee of Catholics. Oh, so they're blaming the Catholics for all of this cen cen censorship against Jehovah's Witnesses? They're, they're yeah. blaming... Wait a minute. Wait, no, hold on now. Hold the phone, J-dubs. I was sitting in a district convention many years ago when was a Dateline, right? Dateline did a story with Barbara Anderson who first came out and started exposing the watchtower, the wash towel. Yeah, there's just so much crap now. I can't even speak straight. The the <laughs> Plus he's royal. Yeah. The uh, the wash towel and but in bi biblical bullshit society. I, I I remember sitting in Watchtower said, "Do not watch this program because it's put on by apostates." Wait a minute, who is suppressing the information? It's not ABC News. It's you people. You don't want us to watch that because it's a it's a it's putting you in a bad light. Who suppressed that? You did Watchtower. That wasn't the Catholic Church doing that. My goodness. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Well, now, this is just bullshit through well, and through. Well, now they have the Australian Royal Commission yeah. where one of their governing body, Jeffrey Jackson, is giving his testimony. And how many witnesses, when you ask them if they've seen this, no, oh, no. I haven't even heard about it. Yeah. But yet Who's suppressing those watching. facts? Yeah. But that's Watchtower suppressing the facts. Now, he, here they are, here they are condemning the propagandists for... Uh, suppression. For suppressing unfavorable facts. <laughs> but yet, That's you doing that, Watchtower. But yet they won't call or have their elders call the police either about the child abuse. Exactly. Suppress it. 
suppress it. Don't don't tell the news media <gasps> news media the fa but yet I find it very condemnatory that in this <coughs> article they're blaming the 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 committee of Catholics for their censorship, but yet when Barbara Anderson is on this program, it's Jehovah's Witnesses that are suppressing the facts yeah. by blaming the apostates for doing this. Well, I like this next part because they talk about, have you ever wondered <coughs> why so many films exalting Catholic nuns and priests as the heroes... <laughs> <laughs> Moviegoers, don't you realize yet why it's always a Catholic priest involved when religion is to be shown in glorious light and why it is a Protestant preacher when religion is to be the butt of a joke? It is high time to awake. You know, how... And yet they suppress that witnesses aren't even supposed to go and watch anything about their own religion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, now this concluding paragraph is great. The fact is that too many people do their thinking by proxy. Wait, what? what read that again. <laughs> read, read that again. Are you going to start yelling again? The fact, the, the fact is. Okay, hold on. That too many people do their <laughs> thinking <laughs> by proxy. Oh, that's not a big enough bag of M&Ms. No, but it's going to help in this situation. Here, maybe this will help. Ah, this is even better. <laughs> They allow columnists to do it, com commentators to do it, politicians to do it, ministers and priests to do it, and we might as well add in governing body to do well, it. Well, that's the thing. The Watchtower publication is doing exactly what they're condemning the rest of, the, of society of doing. Yep. yep. They're allowing these people to do their thinking for you through columns, news journals, but yet that's exactly how Watchtower manipulates the mind of Jehovah's Witnesses. And this next part is very profound. So if there's any Jehovah's Witnesses watching this, please just think. And the people are content to buy the second-hand thinking. That's what it is. Second-hand thinking. Jehovah's Witnesses have become content. <clears throat> With second-hand thinking. Yep. Propaganda is a challenge to the individual to use his own mind, if he has one. <laughs> to scrutinize and analyze. To be impartial and unprejudiced. To be wary of words and ideas highly charged with emotion. In short, know the propagandist tricks. And defend yourself. Wow. Be prudent. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Proverbs 14, 15. Wow. That, that's just... Wow. Well, here again, it's self-condemnatory, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It really is. Our good friend, the uh, unknown apostate, let me just double check the name. Yep. Sent us... Hi, sweetie. ...an article from the 1960... Watchtower. This is the October 1st. You know the family that sent us all these Bond volumes? You don't know how much we you can't treasure. Believe and you, what we we're finding these. in this stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it truly is. Oh, so much appreciated. The article is entitled Numbers Are Not Enough. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah's blessing you. Because you are experiencing tremendous growth all over the world. Look how many hundreds of thousands you're baptizing. Look how many kingdom halls you're building. Look how many um, Bethel families are working at your... Damn, I would... You know what? i got to quit deprogramming myself because I can't even remember these damn words anymore. Bethel workers. No, not Bethel workers. The branches. There we go. You know what? I'm glad I'm deep because I'm glad that these words don't come readily to my mind because as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I would have continued to swallow that propaganda to the point to where these words just flow off my tongue and now i got to stop and think about them. Numbers are not enough. Now, we all know that Jehovah's Witnesses boast 7 point something million members and their peaks reach 8. And Jehovah's Witnesses say, see... Jehovah is with us because we get 8 million members. Okay. 
This watchtower. October, October 1st, 1960. Now keep in mind, Jehovah's Witnesses, back in 1960, you'd have been peddling this propaganda from door to door. You'd have been anxious to get this in the hands of a Catholic, a Hindu, a Protestant, a Jew, a Buddhist. You would have loved for them to read this article. Note what's in here. Today, excuse me, just in case, today, religious organizations have a habit <laughs> of pointing to their great numbers and wealth as proof of their being favored by God. Does that sound like somebody we know? Mm, no, not at all. Not at all? Okay, <laughs> let me go on. The Roman Catholic Church boasts a population of 464 million, almost one-fifth of the world's population. Well, it's more than that now. Keep in mind, this is 1960. Yeah. Followers of Buddha brag in even larger numbers, some 500 million. Hinduism claims 300 million adherents. Muslims... 300 million followers. In Judaism, nearly 12 million people. Well, that number would be higher if Hitler hadn't killed so many during World War II. That number would have been higher. Protestants, the world over number some 225 million. In the Orthodox, another 200 million. <clears throat> Do these great numbers represent God's blessings? Many professed Christians say yes. They point to membership increases as a mark of Christian fruitage. Did they really print that? They okay, I printed see it. that. <laughs> they printed that. And of course, we all know that Jehovah's Witnesses believe this wholeheartedly. So what do you think the name of the next article is? Because, you know, it's, it's numbers are not enough. The next article is entitled, Get Out of Her, My People. <laughs> Pointing the finger that all these religions are part of Babylon the Great. It's going to be destroyed. Do you see the handwriting on the wall today is one of their headlines? One of their, uh, it's like, get out of her now. And of course, you know, being an ex-Jehovah, oh, hell, you don't even have to be an ex-Jehovah Witness to know where this article is going to go. They were saying the same bullshit back in 1960 as they say today. Nothing has changed. Except Jehovah's Witnesses will say, well, that just means that we're, you know, uh, I, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a number out there. Five decades closer to Armageddon than we were in 1960. But, the next article I found quite interesting. The Holy Bible. The book by Jehovah's Witnesses? What? Yeah, the Holy Bible. The book by Jehovah's Witnesses. I thought it was by God. No, 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 no. This Or by Holy Spirit. No, no, no. This article contradicts the author of the Bible now. Oh. It says the book by Jehovah's Witnesses. I see it. You see it? I see it. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I'm going to read one paragraph. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, By yeah, the yeah. way, thank you the unknown apostate for this particular article because it really um, shows that Jehovah's Witnesses cannot be God's organization by looking at statistics alone because every religion seemingly does that as what well, was pointed out in that article. We just did it about alone. the Mormons last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, you really need to stop and do your own thinking. Like the previous article we read from, don't let Watchtower do your thinking because it's destructive. It's destructive. It's to propaganda. Let, it's propaganda to let someone else, even a religion that seemingly proclaims to have God's blessings in backing, it don't work because what Watchtower has condemned in the past, even this article on Numbers Alone article that I just quoted from, that's exactly how Jehovah's Witnesses think today. You've been led absolutely 
by propagandists. You absolutely have. And I'm going to show that again right here. Because we all know that in the mind of some Jehovah's Witnesses, they claim to be God's organization because they have restored the divine name to the Bible. Okay? This is what this paragraph says, and then I'm going to read from another article. Paragraph, paragraph three. 3, page 584. No man has lived more than 1,600 years. And so how could such a book so long in writing have just one author? It is because the book's author is not a man who dies. The name of the author shows the fact because his name is Jehovah. Watchtower uses that name as if it is a historical fact that the name of God is Jehovah. Going right back to the 1950 Watchtower, December 1st, pages uh, 469 through 474. Watchtower admits, well, I'm just going to read the paragraph. Thank you for this, because this is in response to um, a Catholic Monsignor who criticized Watchtower. It's new, New World Translation. Using, putting the name Jehovah in the New World Translation. And this is Watchtower's response. And they had the audacity to print this. Yeah. It's page 469 to 474, an open letter to the Catholic Monsignor. And it has a subheading, the divine name, and this is the second paragraph. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity to present some facts to you and to the public. We do not say that Jehovah is a correct pronunciation of God's name. But yet right here, I just read, the divine author shows that fact because his name is Jehovah. So, Jehovah's Witnesses... What is the truth? Is his name Jehovah? Or in their response to this Catholic Monsignor, we do not say that Jehovah is a correct, correct pronunciation. And they go a step further. For that matter, neither is Jesus the correct, correct pronunciation of Christ's name. And then they go on to say that it was actually pronounced as Yeshua in the Aramaic language. Now, it's interesting to know that Watchtower did not just stop right there. They had the audacity to print another article in 1980, and I don't happen, I don't think, let's see here. I don't have that article uh, here. Because you sent it to your mother. Because I, that's right. <laughs> and, but Watchtower pretty much... Oh, we have it. Watchtower pretty much said the same thing again in 1980, that they acknowledge that the divine name is not Jehovah. But yet here, they say the name of the author shows that fact because his name is Jehovah. So what is it, Jehovah's Witnesses? Is it or is it not? Inquiring minds want to know. It is in the 1980 Watchtower, February 1st, page 11, the divine name in later times. Under the first hat subheading, the name Jehovah becomes widely known. And you, can, if you have this Watchtower Library CD-ROM, all you have to do is put in Raymundus Martini, and it comes up several times. So in this first paragraph under the subheading, Interestingly, Raymundus Martini, a Spanish monk of the Dominican order, first rendered the divine name as Jehovah. This form appeared in his book, Puglia, I know I'm going to get in trouble. I don't know Italian. Published, <laughs> published in 1270 CE, over 700 years ago. So it was a Spanish monk that first rendered the divine name as Jehovah. Yeah. And, you know, then it gets into the YHWH, you know, the tetragrammaton. Yeah, which you is... You can uh, do research on which that. Which is a yud hey vav hey But... <coughs> When you read the forward of your own Bibles, Watchtower, even in the forward, says they use that name Jehovah because it's widely known and it's popular. Hey, idiots! It didn't become widely known 
or popular until you put it in your own damn Bible. Until Jehovah's Witnesses went from door to door saying, hey, did you know that the uh, King James Version tells you that God's name is Jehovah? If you hadn't have been going from door to door, that name would have never become popular. It would have just become a very obscure name in a Bible that some Catholic monk inserted there because, I don't know, maybe he was smoking crack, smoking weed. I don't know. Maybe he was doing magic mushrooms. I don't know. But the fact remains is that Watchtower admits that the divine name is not Jehovah. But yet, in this article I just read, they make a bold, state, a bold um, statement. As a matter of fact, the divine name is Jehovah. Well, and isn't that how propagandists work? Well, you don't even have to go to the old literature, the old light. Jeffrey Jackson did a talk. Um, Jerry Jones did a video about it not too long ago that Jeffrey Jackson basically admitted the same thing, too. They yeah. do not know for sure how the YHWH was originally pronounced. Yeah, but here's the issue for Jehovah's Witnesses. Here's the challenge. Don't let Watchtower do the thinking for you. Think for yourself. Here's a challenge. Read your Bibles and look how many times Almighty God punished the Israelites for bowing down and worshiping a God during their day and age that was popular and his name was widely known and that name was Baal or Baal however you want to pronounce it now try to make those two compatible in your own mind the divine name today Jehovah is no more credible than the name of Baal that the Israelites were sometimes seduced to follow and they were punished for it because see, remember, Baal was widely known and popular, and it was popular. In fact, archaeologists have even unearthed little figurines that even had the tetragrammaton etched in them. That's how misled some of the Israelites became that they could not tell the difference between a figurine and Almighty God. And isn't that how Watchtower works today? You can't tell the difference between a brick-and-mortar kingdom hall or a brick-and-mortar organization and God. You can't separate the two because it's become popular yep. among Jehovah's Witnesses. So, our personal view on it is just to be on the safe side, we just follow the Lord's Prayer and where He says, Our Father. Jesus said, when you yep. pray, pray this way, Our, our Father. Our fleshly fathers, we didn't call by our first name. It was Dad or, you know, Father. Well, isn't it a real disrespectful thing? Even, yeah. even in human thinking today, it's, disrespectful. it's very disrespectful for a child to call their mom and dad by their first name extremely disrespectful. Or at least it wasn't our generation. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, things are changing. But the fact being is that if we as humans consider that disrespectful, then how much more so would Almighty God consider that yeah. disrespectful? I just notice our battery's going yeah. dead. So you all have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. And hugs to everybody. Witnesses. Please, please do your own thinking and don't let Watchtower do it for you. Bye. Bye.